My guest today is the NBA star player Alonzo Mourning. Alonzo is a yeah, that's great. He is a seven-time All-Star player. Seven times. He was voted NBA Defensive Player of the Year two years in a row. He has won an Olympic gold medal. And in 2006, his team, the Miami Heat, won the NBA title. Despite all of his success on the court, he has had his share of deep personal challenges and setbacks, including the discovery of a rare kidney disease. And it hit him at his peak. But through faith, Alonzo Mourning has turned his scars into stars. He has a new book titled Resilience, where he details his journey. He's married to his beautiful wife, Tracy. And together they have a son, Trey, and daughter, Micah. Welcome with me this morning, Alonzo Mourning. <laughs> uh, you're the second NBA player we've had here. Really? Yeah, you had my uh, my old college teammate, uh, Dikemi Mutombo. He, uh, uh, he was a time. college classmate? Yes, yes, he's a college classmate. He's uh, a little bit taller than I am. Yeah, so he I'm is sure a little we're looking, we're looking up a little bit further, you know, but... Uh, How fast, tall are you? I am six feet ten inches, and uh, Dikembe was seven two. He's seven two, so. Oh, yeah. four inches taller than four you. Four inches taller. So I was looking at up at someone else. So now, now I know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's truly a, a pleasure to be here. Uh, Why? To, well, to praise God, number one, and at the same time, to just share uh, this amazing congregation, my testimony, and um, I like to compliment you on on this beautiful place of worship. Wow. Tell us about your childhood. You were 10 years old and you did something I cannot believe happened. What happened and why did you make the move you made? Well, um, childhood um, was a part of time in my life where I was going through some, some, some amazing challenges. And uh, my mother and father was going through a divorce and uh, it affected me uh, very emotionally. And uh, when it came time for, uh, we went through a countless hours of counseling and like so many people in the world that go through the issues that they go through in, in different families, you know, changes are, are made, unfortunately. And um, I reached a point where I had, through the court system, I had to decide whether or not I wanted to live with my mother or my father. And I loved them dearly uh, so much. So it was, at 12 years old, it was difficult for me to choose which parent I wanted to live with, you know, so I elected to stay in the foster system. Uh, eventually, over a period of time, um, the job of the social services is to find uh, families for the children that are in, in, in group homes and foster care. And um, I ended up in the hands of an amazing woman. Her name was Fanny Three. Uh, throughout her lifetime, she fostered 49 kids oh. throughout her lifetime. You know, is that in your book? Yes, it is in my, my uh, memoir, Resilience, you know, and uh, she's so angelic. She touched so many lives. Uh, she left her fingerprints all over my life, and she helped me understand uh, the importance of She's a retired school teacher, so she stressed education, uh, which I carry with me throughout uh, my life and graduated from Georgetown in 92 with a sociology degree. And, and she helped me understand the importance of utilizing my faith as a crutch and getting through the challenges in my life, you know, so uh, she was very helpful in that aspect. Wow, and you live the faith. Tell me about your rare kidney disease. Well, in um, 2000, I was diagnosed um, with a uh, genetic disorder called focal glomerulosclerosis, a disease that um, deteriorates the filters of the kidney. And uh, when I was diagnosed, I had just come back from winning a gold medal in Sydney, Australia. 
Uh, I just come off an amazing season. Um, first team all NBA, all star defensive player of the year, you know, so um, witnessing the birth of my daughter. And I was at a point in my life where it was an, I was at extreme high in my life. And um, to come back from Sydney, Australia, and to have to go through a preseason physical and hear that particular news, I was humble. And it totally put life in a totally different perspective. And I knew that uh, first and foremost, um, I wasn't going to ask, why me? I asked God, why now? Evidently, there's some other things that you want me to do. It's not basketball right now. You know? And eventually, it's amazing how adversity introduces a man to himself. I mean, you go through different trials and tribulations in your life, and it helps you stop and reflect and understand your true purpose here. And not once did I give up. I could have easily given up. I was in a position where, you know, financially I was secure, and I could have easily just given up, you know. But uh, I followed my heart, which I encourage each and every one of you to do. Follow your heart, because uh, your heart will give you the answers, and ask God for the direction. And I asked that. Um, I had to take a, um, a series of oral regimens um, over a three-year period. Uh, my first diagnosis was that I would need a transplant within a year, and I'd be on dialysis within a year. But uh, it took about three years for that to happen. And I was blessed with, a, with an amazing, uh, amazing blessing to have a uh, cousin who donated a kidney in 2000. And um, the rest is history. I'm on my feet. And um, again, you know, I'm sharing that testimony with so ma many others that transplantation saves lives. Wow. Going through that, the depths of hurt and despair, Jacques, mm -hmm. and the heights of recovery through others and through God, mm -hmm. what did that whole passageway in your life do to your faith? Well, at the same time, going through those particular obstacles in my life, and just the reason why I wrote this memoir, Resilience, is to share my experience with individuals and influence them. Um, obviously to never give up and to also uh, let them know that uh, that they have the ability the God-given ability to overcome the adversities and challenges in their life you know so I mean I look at my overall scenario as a true blessing because a lot of people look at this scenario as why it's terrible and um, it's, it's a shame that he had to go through these particular things you know but I, I look at it as a, as a blessing because it enabled me to touch so many lives in the process it's amazing how many lives I've touched more lives going through um, this particular ordeal with uh, organ um, uh, transplantation, organ donation, uh, being, being an advocate and uh, a voice for that. I've touched more lives doing that than I have on the basketball court. Really? So, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I really do. And it's truly been a blessing to be able to, to share my testimony with other individuals, receive the letters, uh, to receive the words of encouragement, uh, the words of inspiration from other individuals um, telling me that um, I have provided hope for them to overcome a lot of the obstacles they're de dealing with, you know, and um, I look at God as a triumphant God. He created each and every one of us with that particular ability to overcome and not succumb to, to certain disorders and obstacles in their lives. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's important for us to, first of all, communicate with him and he'll give us the answers that we need. And we got to be patient with them because we might not get the answers we want immediately, but eventually we'll get the answers that we want. And um, I feel like that my purpose on this earth wasn't just to play basketball. It's just to touch other people's lives throughout my experiences. And that's why uh, I was able uh, or influenced to put my life on paper so I could share it with the world and encourage them to overcome a lot of the challenges that they face as well.